Okay, this is Dr. Delahousie again making a video for my MAE 4344 class, Senior Design, talking about planning, scheduling, the critical path method, and then using software. Uh, for example, this piece of software is called Gantt Project. The gold standard uh, for most people is probably Microsoft Project, but again, uh, I don't know what's going on, but there's no way that I can find a computer that will give me both the ability to record a video and the ability to run Microsoft Project on the same machine. And so I found this free program called Gantt Project. It's not perfect, but I think it's totally acceptable for this class. Again, I'm not requiring that you use this program for this class, but it does have some educational value in showing you the kinds of things that you will almost certainly be involved in in project management where you have to manage not only schedules and time, but you have to money, but manage budgets and you have to manage people, etc. I still have a little bit of the last project that we talked about in video number two. This is video number three where I wanted to look at a project that this uh, software developer, Gantt Project, had built that has more sophistication than the one that I put in, that I just created. But I said earlier I couldn't find a place where the system would tell me the total duration after it had figured out the critical path without me doing some counting. But I, I, right after I finished that other video, I think I figured out a way to do that. What we can do is make a container activity uh, at the very beginning of our project and then place all of our actual activities as sub-activities within that container activity. And then when I do the critical path method, set up all the activities, the total project will tell me that I've got a total duration of 19%. And so... Um, if you like that, do that. Uh, I think I like it. All right, what I want to do then is go find uh, and open. Let's see if under recent. Okay, I could go to it. Now I'm going to go ahead and open it the way you would have to. Open. Do you want to save this other one first? Yes, I think I will. Um, I'm going to call it 19 week. That's fine. Uh, we'll cancel that. Go project, open, and I'm going to go to upper directory, upper directory, all the way back to the beginning of the computer, and I'm going to go to program files x86, and there I will find Gantt project and the house building sample. So we'll open that one up. It says some of the tasks have been modified. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, see hopefully that'll clear that out or I'll click away to clear that out okay so what do we have in this project first of all let's use something I don't think I used in the other video let's zoom out a bit and take a look at this total project and uh, let's see I can use this to let's see so I've got a little bit off the bottom of the screen since I've already set up this video window I don't really want to make this window bigger, so we're going to leave it as is. Uh, notice that they have set up several of these uh, high-level projects or container projects is what I called them earlier. We can close those and get some of them out of the way. And now we see a bit more of the big picture of the project, which is architectural design, interior design, the construction, uh, decoration. They got a little bit cute on this one because they have uh, a few different milestones on here. Their very first milestone says, survive the end of the world. So for whatever reason, we've survived the end of the world, uh, and now we're ready to build our end of the world apocalypse house, I suppose, is what's going on. Uh, but a key thing is you know, just seeing... Again, how these have been used in the sub-project, I can look and see that this one is 100% complete. Uh, this one is partially complete, but not totally complete. There is a milestone right here that says, by this date, we need to have agreed on the architectural plans. There are other milestones in here. Uh, let's see, this one, I don't see its black. Okay, the black dot is down here which says construction is completed. Uh, there is a decoration phase. And then finally, a milestone that says move the family in. 
See if I can point to that. Okay, so, but it was this one. If we zoom out a little bit, let's see. Yeah, bring your family here was that final milestone. If we look at how they've used resources, they were fairly extensive. Again, we can see that, and we'll have to scroll around a little bit to bring in the entire project, and let's zoom out a little bit, because that actually works fairly well. And so Jack House can, is the project manager, and he can see uh, that he has this task in green, underloaded. Pre-design here, fully loaded. Furniture selection, equipment uh, planning, and that during this time frame right here, he has these two tasks, and that looking at the big picture for him, he is overloaded on these days, and I guess that's a so be it kind of thing. Now, they now have me puzzled. I don't know how they created these tasks. So I'm going to go explore the Jack House and see how they created these other default roles. I don't, I have not found that piece of the user interface apparently. Let's see if it's here. Uh, resource properties. Okay, I just haven't found that yet. So if any of you find out how to change and add role names to these things, because it does make the project uh, more understandable that John Black is the excavator operator, Michelangelo is the architect, Tom White, so we got a bunch of bricklayers on the project, and we have a foreman on the project. But we get a whole lot more manage management information on what our people are doing and how heavily, are the, how heavily they're loaded and why. And so we can see that Peter Green is overloaded during this time frame because we've got him on two different things. And what we may need to do is move some of the bricklayers around uh, so that we're not uh, overusing Peter Green because he really can't be two places at once. So a bit more management information in there and maybe just a bit more interesting looking chart that has made use of lots of container tasks and subtasks. I think that's probably all I want to say about this. So uh, certainly Microsoft Project will do all of the things that this one will do. Every one of them it will probably do better and will do multiple ways and then we'll do a lot more things. But So this gives you a flavor of kinds of software you're likely to be working with in your career. That'll end this video.